Hey mate, welcome back to Liberty Junction. What a crackingly awesome week I've had. Not. I tell you what, this week has been enough to put you off model railways for life. I've had a right mission of a job, but I've got all four lanes running again, look, as you can see. And this one on the very right hand side is them on the magnetic couplings and it's a right length of a train. Check this out. If you're a wagon counter, start counting. So basically, I did that dog episode, didn't I? And then uh, I basically stopped filming, turned it all off and came downstairs and then did audio for it afterwards, like I normally do. And then uh, thought no more about it, get a couple of days, went to work, blah, 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 went back up. I'd not touched anything at all and I went to turn it on and it immediately shorted like I'd gone over a point wrong or whatever. So I reset it, and every time I reset it, it were immediately shorting. So I thought, oh, what's going on here? So basically, oh, look at that, look. If you were counting wagons, I've just swapped camera around. What an idiot, why have I done that? Uh, you may or may not get to count them now, who knows? Sorry about that. Anyway, back on what we're on about. I kept pressing it, and it kept shorting, and it were doing my head in. So I thought, I wonder if I'd just put some on line like a piece of metal across two lines or something like that because there was no reason I'd not done anything at all uh, and I could not figure it out and I must have been an hour. So then I started taking everything off at track and then even then it was still shorting out. I was flicking points and it was the very, very last point. To cut this story so it don't get too boring. It was the very last point I tried, uh, which was, it had basically stopped working. It was one of them seat point motors, absolute annoying. And it was the one I don't even use, so I don't know why it's decided to just go wrong and go wonky. It's not even old. Everything on this layout, it was brand new for this layout, and it's like 18 months old maximum. So if they don't last 18 months, that's garbage. That's the second one I've lost. So anyway, basically... Uh, it's the one near the quarry line where I just normally have stuff parked up, so I don't even use it, because to be honest, when I were designing it, it I had it an ad, a bit of an idea to have it as a bit of a siding to put stuff in, because I was going to do a bit of a station there when I first started, because I, I had no idea what I was doing. And to cut a long story short, it was just garbage, so I just have it as a bit of a half storage area, so I never use it. But yeah, it just decided to... It was as though the point were thrown, the frog had gone wrong, and it was just shorting out so i've had to manually rag it across my finger from underneath and then it fixed it but oh my god it took about two hours of my life that well, i'm never going to get back anyway wagon counting back on wagon counting part two go get ready so it were all happy days again that it were working but i'd literally stripped everything off my track and i ain't got really any storage so i basically placed all bits all over the floor and I, it was just chaos absolute chaos Anyway, look at length of that train. That's decent, that, isn't it? I couldn't test... I've got another eight of them magnetic couplings, them army ones, but I ain't even got enough wagons now to, to put them on, unless I use the AWS stuff, which I don't want to do. Good old Intercity 125 running his uh, service of it, Bridge. And as you can see, I've still got one of my extreme train spotters that just basically paying tribute on Bridge now to that one that fell to his death. Uh, I don't mind, I'm not going to move them on unless they fall to their death and I'll, I'll move them on after that. So yeah, basically that's that all happened, all that electrical nonsense and it, it basically, it, it cost us an episode that because I was I going up there to have some fun and it turned out to be not fun. So then after that, that's when I started doing chinchilla sand episode and oh my god, that has been an absolute mission as well. That chinchilla sand, I really, really don't recommend it folks. You'll look on my bridge now, and it doesn't look half bad. I mean, I know if you go onto like realistic railway modelling websites, it's it's going to make mine look absolute rubbish, and it's only amateur stuff, mine. And I don't care. I don't try and make it the best, but it doesn't look half bad. It doesn't look half bad, and it's cheap. But that's about all it is. It's so, you're spending five or six amounts of the time that you'd spend using proper stuff, and I'd rather pay extra money. My only advice for chinchilla sand is if you are going to use it, which I don't think you should, but if you are, do a very thin layer and see how it goes from there because I did it quite thick uh, and I'm running a 3mm uh, foam bed. So it was quite thick and it goes to like a bit like porridge consistency and that's when the cracking starts. And it even cracked without the dehumidifier, but just not as bad. In the end, I ended up putting dehumidifier back up there because I ended up filling cracks with woodland scenics fine stuff in places and fixing it like that 
Anyway, look who it is. It's good old Red Buff has uh, come to joint video. There's some right trains going on today, isn't there? We've got 37s, Intercity 125, and old Cavalex. Old Red Buffers. And as you can see, he may or may not have Red Buffers anymore. And what else you might see is my premium custom nameplates that I've I designed myself uh, on a computer and printed them off. And uh, look at that, look, Red Buffers. If you want any of these custom signs, I can do any sign you want, the £4 each, uh, plus that, plus postage, and I can do you them. Laser printer, decent. So it was only when I started ballasting that I realised how much ballasting I'd not finished. There were literally ballast everywhere. The only, the only line that were completely ballasted it was the small inner loop of the lower, lower section of track. Everywhere else, I'd missing parts where I'd never got around to it. Most of the upper section were not, were not done. And then the big loop that goes underneath the train station itself, round the back where that big white wall is, that were never done. So anyway, I've decided to do it all, and I've done it all with Chinchillasan like a madman. So I've, I've spent loads and loads of time on it this week. But while I were doing it, I've decided to add some basic scenics around that back end. Because like I've said before, it's such a stretch now, it's it's like a minimum three foot reach if you're lucky, but closer to four, and you, you really have to be a contortionist to do it. So it's only basic stuff, but I ordered a boatload of stuff, and I've ordered some more static grass, uh, which I'm going to add in the next day or two. Postman did me a solid yesterday and didn't bother following note on door, so uh, it didn't turn up till today, so I haven't had time to do it, so... This video has got some of the new scenics on, but not not all of them. So anyway, just going back to Red Buffers, I don't know if you clocked it on front. I've done them a little bit of a rusty design, and on backlog, I've done them a little bit shiny silver, like it's brand new still. And I haven't decided what I'm doing with that. It's just that there's a, one of my viewers, one of my subscribers, Steve, uh, who were basically almost threatening me to put some gunk on them, so I felt a bit intimidated. So I've done it now anyway, Steve, so... Uh, I don't know what you're going to threaten me about now. <laughs> I'm only messing, he won't really threaten him, so don't, don't go call it police on him or all like that. Right, where, where are we at and what we're talking about here now? So yeah, the scenic stuff, I've basically ordered, I've ordered loads of woodland scenic bushes in light green and olive green, because I quite like that stuff. I've ordered some almost yellow grass for my Iron Horse static grass machine that I've got. Uh, and I've ordered some light green as well for that, so I'm just going to add some more grassy bits to area now, because I used to have loads, like I've shown you on one of my videos, I think episode 13, and all that section got took away, so yeah, I want some more of that, so I've got that. And I've ordered uh, a couple of other bits, what I can't even think what is. I've ordered some more black weathering powder, because I knocked my pot of it the other week, and it, it, I basically lost it all, like a maniac. I'll tell you what else I've done as well on upper section at Viaduct Bridge, that uh, top girdery bridge. There's, there were a couple of areas at the back where the track just like dropped off and there were like a bit of a void where you could see breeze block. I filled that in now with some uh, card and scenic that. Oh no, I forgot all about you, pal. Oh dear, we're going to have to get you down. We're going to have to get him down now because he's been there for about a month, and let's face it. That's going to be a lawsuit. There's going to be uh, attorney, American attorneys coming for me for that. Oh, I'll tell you what else I've done and all. A bit of a sidetrack here. I, I, as soon as I got all four tracks dry and running again, I noticed I was running my Backman 47 round and I've, I've put a KD on that and I never noticed this before, but the KD position on the 47s, is it's not in right place, is it? It's just so annoying. So it's too low. It's too low, so basically it catches everything and it uncouples and I didn't realise this and basically it was only when I put my uh, I put it onto the Batman coaches uh, and it were basically running round and it managed maybe a loop or two loops and it just randomly uncoupled everywhere on track. It weren't any anywhere specific. Uh, I'll get back to you on that, ladder man. I know you've been hiding from police there for the last couple of uh, couple of days, but because uh, since you killed his dog with train but yeah as soon as eight comes off with force we'll look at getting you a train driving position so yeah back to what we're on about sorry the uh the 47 yeah it were rubbish it run coupling all the time with 
it uh, on its own coaches. How annoying is that? And 37s are perfect, so I don't know why they decided to change it. Apparently, it's a common thing, and I, I didn't know. Anyway, so what I've done, which may or may not be of interest to some of you, is I've made my own little modification because uh, I got some. KDs delivered other week and one of them it packed where it, it were obliterated it was as though someone must have stood on packet and, and smashed it to it so anyway I've, I've, I've took that broken one and I've kind of used a little bit of 2mm plastic card the broken one and an unbroken one and I've made me on like Liberty Junction style 00 Dave KD modified 2.0 which raises it up to the perfect well I say perfect to a night that works and since I've done that it's not lost coupling so I think I've got I've made my own little thing which I might knock them out at £45 each if anyone wants any uh, it's a bit of a prototype at the minute so it's a little bit crap looking but I'm going to paint it up weather it up and yeah it'll look half decent I think I can't show it you because this video is pre-recorded so I'm just telling you about it now and what I'll do for the next episode I'll leave myself a little mental note in the brain to film it and show you and see what you think so this episode's basically becoming a, a, just an update of updates isn't it uh, and telling you about what i've done so yeah the problem i've got at the minute is it's been chaos and it's been absolutely in pieces and ruined and bits all over the floor so it's it's still kind of like it won out there's uh, areas that are semi incomplete that i've not filmed which I would have filmed had the postman not let me down and brought it a day earlier, it would have been done. But it hadn't been done, so anyway, this, this episode is a bit of a gap filler, just to give a little bit of an update, because otherwise what's going to happen is on the next episode, it's going to be like all, all bits and bobs changed, and you might start getting a bit panicky, aren't you? Thinking, oh, I don't like, look at this, it's all changed, so just feeding it into you, like drip feeding it. But... It's good to have a semi-sensible one, isn't it? Because, let's face it, my next one, I think, is going to be another bit of a storyline mad crackersy one. Not too mad, because I don't want to upset too many folks, but, yeah, that's where we're going to go. I've got a bit of an idea for an episode, which uh, will probably go down like a lead balloon, but it's all right. So I'm sidetracking again now. I've, I've created, round back of that loop, where that bright white section was, I've turned that into a semi filmable area so it's a new little scenic area that i can film now because uh, i've put some brick wall on an area that i'll never see but you can see it once you drop camera there and i didn't want it to look rubbish I, I always try and make it like as you see i don't try and have me background or my arms or pieces of brick wall i always try and make it look like a complete shot uh and I kind of get away with that most of the time I don't even like showing wooden beams but sometimes that just can't be helped because that's just what it is I tried cutting them down once and that roof fell down so we had to have it rebuilt that's actually not true but it would be true if I did it so that's why I, I haven't done it so what's my plans then now I'm going to weather the rest of the upper section of track and I'm going to use weathering powder even though it really got on my nerves doing it on bottom bit I've decided I do like the look of it and that's what I'm going to do but what I'm going to try I'm going to try and do a few little bits and bobs of pioneering ideas which I'll uh, if they work I'll tell you about in the next video and if they don't I'll just pretend I haven't done them and then uh, cover over it I've done the upper section of ballasting I've done it quite heavy and quite messy as you'll probably see from this little shot that I've got here this bit of a I thought this were a bit of an idea, but I think it looks absolute garbage, doesn't it? So I probably will never do that shot again. Plus, I'll get in all in a pickle when it were nearly crashing into me. But what I've what I've done is I've done it quite thick, and what I've had to do is pick a little bit of it away because uh, there were a couple of bits where I'd gone a bit too much, and it was causing a couple of bits and bobs of issues. One of them, there was a certain point on track round this corner. Oh, I'll tell you what I'll do here. I'll just shut up a sec. Just uh, that uh, left-hand side now, that little bit of greenery, you see that against clouds. That's one of them new cardboard sections I was telling you about. So I've added some grass and some scatters, and I think it looks quite decent, that. So now, yeah, I'm, I'm really happy with that. It always looked a bit unfinished. I still need to get that back scene under the viaduct where it's got the water in the river and all that. I still want to get that printed onto some Fomex by a proper printing company. And then that area will be finished, and it'll look well decent because at the minute that's still getting let down by the fact that I'm using an A3 uh, couple of A3 pages of laser printer print that I've stuck together with a little bit of sellotape and uh, masking tape and stuff serves its purpose for what it were needed but at some point it will get finished properly I think it's 20 quid they've quoted me to do me a proper board so that'll look good 
So yeah, going back to what I was saying, I think the uh, the upper track now is about ready to just take the weather in, and then I'm going to leave it alone, and I'm never going to ever mess with ballast ever again on this layout because. I absolutely hated that. I didn't mind doing it bottom one, but I'll never use chinchilla sand again. So a bit of a newsy, uh, updated type episode, wasn't it, folks? So I hope you didn't mind that. I just didn't want to just go uh, like missing for like two or three weeks and uh, and then you're not getting your fix. So hopefully there were a couple of little nice running shots in it and uh, just put you in a bit of a picture as to what I've been doing because I've proper been grafting. I must have put... 20 hours straight in on this uh, last couple of days it's uh, it's took absolutely forever so i just wanted to like update you on that super awesome uh, if you've not subscribed and you fancy a bit more please click that whatever bye